penis pod. <laughs> that's uh, that, that that's the whole video. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's really not. Um, I've been meaning to make this video now for the better part of a couple of years to thank Shane. I won't share his surname uh, unless he comments below uh, because uh, this is a magnificent um, 3D printed replica of a Mosha, Mosh, uh, Peruvian culture pot, a ceramic in its original form, uh, very much with a phallic focus, as you can tell. <laughs> and it came into my life because both Shane and I are friends with Samira Minetti, um, a, uh, a wonderful archaeologist who was uh, running the Phallus Fridays on the Archaeosu Facebook page until relatively recently uh, when she she left facebook basically i think she just got fed up of of social media and to be honest who can blame her at times uh, but i'm so glad that, that that we know we all know each other because this therefore came into my life um it was printed in white filament and i had to do some sanding and and, and, f and filling <laughs> some vigorous sanding and filling to to prep the thing and then obviously uh, spray paint it with with a primer and then paint it with a few different ceramic colors to get this sort of um uh, terracotta uh kind of appearance to the object and uh i'll include some links below on the youtube version of this video uh to a couple of uh articles about this particular pottery and and what what the takeaway should be uh, but for me this is part of um, a long-standing thought process that, that's been borne out more and more recently. Uh, there are people, for example, uh, who I've bumped to, into on, on TikTok who are really, really emphasizing the value of 3D printing for archaeology and archaeological education. A solid shout-out here to Stefan Back on TikTok for discussing the value of 3d printing in archaeology but also some related ethics morals and values for example here surrounding human remains as artifacts but also as mitigating the problems surrounding human remains via 3d printing uh, a really great channel so really this was a bit of a, a jumping off point <laughs> um for, for 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 really uh having in my hands um a um uh, <laughs> having in my hand an object which which um you know which do, which means i don't have to have the real thing with me in the room i can have oh god this sounds <laughs> very handy for how, for passing around and uh giving people a sense of what an artifact is actually like to hold um instead of uh, instead of risking breaking or damaging or contaminating the real thing and uh, th this isn't the only 3d printed artifact uh, that i've been given recently um rob of redbeard tours here in newcastle uh 3d printed as a sort of a test case scenario uh a roman dodecahedron roman dodecahedron but i fall don't say knitting that's not what you're for not for knitting and uh, this this isn't to scale but uh, again he handed it over to me one morning over coffee uh, because he wasn't entirely happy with the finish of the print but with some filling with some proper painting you get a nice sort of metallic feel to the object that again this is something i, I would happily hand round to members of the public to children for example and get them to wonder what is it for uh not for knitting so yeah it, it's 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 great fun for for that practical archaeological uh and and teaching um scenario but also i one day couldn't resist a, a, a thought that just popped into my head when i was playing with uh one of my fiddle objects i like to be uh always be fiddling with things and it's this sort of this i don't know this sort of ball that has a, a like a light up led aspect to it to it when you sort of hit it against things but it has 12 large nodes and this has 12 faces so what i ended up wanting to do was to sort of mush them together and create a completely fantastical uh fictional artifact but nonetheless something which which i found really um uh entertaining and and sort of you know really 
actually kind of stimulating in terms of a thought thought experiment and shane once again the 3d printing hero that he is 3d printed this for me uh, i again had to paint it uh, painstakingly actually uh, to, to paint the ball inside uh, the the, uh, the dodecahedron this time all the circ uh, circles on the face of the, of the dodecahedron are um of the same size so that's not really the focus in terms of accuracy the focus was this 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 query as to putting the the 12 noded ball into the 12 sided shape and again just great fun and a really interesting uh, combination of things going on in terms of imagination uh, play uh, thought experiment and being able to sort of manifest these things relatively quickly through 3D printing. I really appreciate uh, Shane's time in this instance because it, it just made, it made literally made my dream come true. <laughs> so 3D modeling and printing clearly have tremendous potential and applications for archeologists, historians, museum curators, and the public at large who want access to some of this material. If they have a 3D printer, they can print something off. Uh, you know, the, the ability to, to to create an artifact, a replica that you don't mind passing around a group for fear of it being dropped and smashed is invaluable. Archaeology, after all, is history via stuff. It's the holding of material and artifacts from the past that, that gives us that connection to people in the past. It's fantastic. Uh, of course, as I've just demonstrated, there's the potential of, of experimentation thought experiments, reconstructive 3D printing, and modeling um, potential use case scenarios for artifacts and seeing if it will work in the real world. And of course, given that, that high-end 3D printers can actually print in, in a one-to-one -one color, uh, sampling a color from an artifact and actually printing in that color, uh, I think we're not far off being able to literally replace artifacts that are contested, for example, at the British Museum. Personally, I'd love to see the Benin bronzes one day returned and uh, and replaced, at least in part, with 3D printed replicas. Scan them while you have them, print them out using metallic filament or metallic embedded filament, which is very much a thing, and then enjoy them for what they are, even though they're not in front of you. It's a fascinating possibility. But if, but if we step even further away from that sort of case-by-case -case print scenario in more of a mass-produced kind of way, uh, injection-molded uh, plastics have been doing something similar for quite a long time. And this is where uh, my second thanks comes in. Uh, the wonderful Tobin, who lives in Japan, but he is Canadian, uh, has uh, for years now been in touch and a couple of years ago he sent me a care package filled with Japanese snacks but also as well some gachas. Now we do have gachas machines and pods here in the UK but they tend to be focused very much on children. They're seen as disposable little plastic toys that may have bright colors or be attached to a cartoon or a, whatever the film that's currently in the cinema uh, whereas in japan you can get whole ranges of of gachas to cater for very niche interests and in this instance what we have is a a jomon venus figurine it's a beautiful little uh, little sculpture and it's part of a whole collection that is uh, celebrating uh, archaeological artifacts in, uh, in, a, in a, a, a pod that you can get on your way to work. This one feels quite heavy. It's quite a dense plastic, maybe a resin or a polyurethane or something, uh, but, but wonderfully high quality, therefore, and highly detailed, and an entirely accessible, mass-produced, version of an archaeological artifact. Uh, he actually sent me two more. Uh, he sent, uh, this is a Dotaku uh, bronze bell, part of the same collection of archaeological artifacts, again molded in plastic, uh, but beautifully detailed and entirely collectible. And finally, uh, requiring some construction, a uh, Morikubo 
uh, stamp. I think it's a family uh, stamp, uh, Morikubo being the family name. And this, uh, if we just put it together, uh, would have been, presumably, to uh, to stamp uh, the name of the family on documents uh, using the base. A beautiful little artefact constructed kind of like a kinder egg toy, I guess. That's that the closest comparison that you might have here in the UK. Um, but again, mass-produced, accessible, highly detailed, collectible archaeological artefacts. I love them. Uh, and thanks again to Tobin. They're, they're, they're magnificent. So there you have it. 3D printing and uh, moulded artefacts. Versions that are accessible, handleable, uh, and, and uh, reproducible in a way that anyone, if they want to, can have access to them and in the case of 3d printed models and artifacts obviously you can pass these along as digital uh, files that then other people can print off at their leisure and uh, and i think it, it's it's that sort of democratization of of information and access to the past that i've always been excited by that's really engendered in a, a, a pot like this <laughs> um, but then of course you have uh, the Gatchas, the Tobin's wonderful um, discovery and sent my way of, of m relatively mass-produced, injection-molded, presumably, uh, artefacts that, that, again, just, just are something I think we could learn from, especially here in the UK. It is a niche. It is clearly a niche that, 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 that they're catering for. But the ability to collect... I don't know, for example, uh, Iron Age coins, you know, that, that, that have been um, scanned by a, a museum or an owner, um, made accessible, that are 3D printable or moldable, that you, that you can collect from a machine for 50p or something. That would be amazing. That would be absolutely incredible. And, and it, it is that, that access that excites me. It's the fact that the people don't have to, I don't have to travel to a museum in Japan, but possibly to see this in person. Um, but also that, that extra step, that extra layer of high quality 3D printing, being able to help us solve and negotiate these international issues surrounding some of the larger museums, especially in the Western world, uh, very exciting. And, uh, and I'm, I, I'm intrigued by the whole thing. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hopefully this has been interesting. I, I, I just needed to, 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 to say thank you once again to Shane and Tobin. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.